1966, Wilson Pickett entered Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals to record some of his most famous songs of all time, including the now legendary Mustang Sally. Originally written by Pickett's former Falcons bandmate, Sir Mac Rice, Pickett's version, produced by Atlantic Records' Jerry Wexler and Fame Studios owner Rick Hall, took a great rhythm and blues hit to mainstream success, with the talents of the studio's incredible house musicians. Mustang Sally. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. I hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode in the series. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. And of course, if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Although Mustang Sally is most commonly associated with Wilson Pickett, the song was first written and recorded by Pickett's former Falcons bandmate, Sir Mac Rice. Rice was inspired to write the rhythm and blues song after visiting Della Reese and her drummer Calvin Shields. Reese had wanted to buy Shields a Lincoln as a birthday present, to which he responded that he would rather have a Ford Mustang. Driving around town with Shields, Rice admitted he had never heard of the Mustang. When Shields pointed out a poster of one, Rice was shocked at the size of the vehicle, declaring that in Detroit, they only drove big cars, Cadillacs, Lincolns, and Mercedes-Benz. Still, the image of the new Mustang stuck in his head and inspired him to write about a woman who only wants to ride around in her car all day. The song's chorus was inspired by a nursery rhyme Rice had heard growing up. Little Sally Walker, sitting in a saucer, weeping and a-crying for a cool drink of water. Rise, Sally, rise, wipe your weeping eyes. Rice was still working out the details when he played a version of the song for Aretha Franklin, in which he used the lines, rise, Sally, rise. Aretha suggested that Rice change the words from rise, Sally, rise to a ride, Sally, ride. Rice admitted to being a little hesitant to the change, but when Aretha sat down at the piano to play along, he knew the song was on the right track. The final touch was also her influence, changing the name of the song from Mustang Mama to Mustang Sally. Rice released his version in 1965, and it hit number 15 on the rhythm and blues charts. All you wanna do is ride around, baby, just ride, Sally, ride. When Mustang Sally was Pickett heard Rice perform the song at the Apollo Theatre, he decided to record his own version, and it was Pickett's version that would bring the song to legendary status. Pickett recorded his version at Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, in sessions that also produced his hit single, Land of a Thousand Dances. Fame, or Florence, Alabama, Music Enterprises was founded by Rick Hall, Billy Sherrill, and Tom Stafford in Florence, Alabama in the late 1950s. In 1960, Hall became the sole owner of fame and moved his efforts to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. After the success of Arthur Alexander's hit, You Better Move On, he was able to use the funds to settle the studios in the now legendary location of 603 East Avalon Avenue. Fame quickly earned a reputation for its incredible house musicians, including the rhythm section, often called the Swampers. The studio and these musicians attracted the attention of Jerry Wexler of Atlantic Records. Wexler, who housed Pickett under his label, sent Pickett to record there. My dad had run into Jerry Wexler at a party, and, and Jerry told him, if you ever find a hit artist, hit song, whatever, send it to me. So a buddy of his had cut a record across town with you know my dad's studio guys call when a man loves a woman, and he the guy had brought it to my dad, so he called Wexler, hooked them up, and got a finder's fee on when a man loves a woman, and that was how the relationship started with Atlantic. So then the next thing, uh, Wexler had been shut out of Stacks, and they were going all in house over there. So he 
called and wanted to bring Pickett down, and that's how Pickett got here. Wexler and Fame owner Rick Hall produced the track. Mustang Sally features the talented combination of Atlantic Records and Fame Studios' best musicians, such as Memphis guitarist Chips Moman and Fame Studio guitarist Jimmy Johnson, drummer Roger Hawkins, bassist Tommy Cogbill, and keyboardist Dewey Spooner Oldham. Oldham stated that there were originally no keyboard plans for the track, but he looked for a way to insert himself into the mix. He told Songfax in a 2012 interview, I was sitting on a stool and we listened to a demo of Sir Mac Rice who wrote the song. And the first thing I noticed was there was no keyboard on that record. But I'm here, I want the job. So what am I going to do that will work within the song? And I just closed my eyes for a second, daydreaming and said, and I wonder what it would sound like if I pretended I was a Harley Davidson motorcycle and was driving through the studio. What would that sound like? There was a little pause in the record where there's not much going on, and I did a rorp, rorp, rorp kind of revving engine thing, and Jerry Wexler liked it because he later tried to get me to do it again when I was in New York. Of course, I didn't. It was specific for that song. Wow! Got to put your black feet on! The phenomenal work of all of these musicians was part of the perfect pairing with the incredible and soulful vocal talents of Wilson Pickett. So not only is Wilson Pickett one of the greatest singers that ever lived, he's also got one of the best, if not the greatest scream. Listen to the isolated vocal track. Listen, all you wanna do is ride around Saturday. Just an incredible vocalist, oh, amazing singer, incredible scream, just unbelievable. According to Oldham, recording Mustang Sally only took three or less takes, but almost ended in disaster. After a particularly great take, the group gathered in the control room with engineer Tom Dowd. Oldham recalled, So Tom Dowd, I think, was sitting at the tape machine and was going to play it. And when it started rewinding, the metal cap stand that holds the tape in place just flew off. And little splinters of tape went flying across the room. So we just automatically bent over and started picking up little pieces of tape. And Wilson Pickett is sort of cursing. We've ruined my master. Dowd kept his cool and sent the musicians out of the room for about 30 minutes while he pieced together 30 to 40 little bits of tape and saved the record. Rodney Hall, Rick Hall's son, says that it may have been a land of a thousand dancers and not Mustang Sally that exploded. He said that's what his father had told him. Either way, those two tracks were cut, obviously at the studio at the same time. So one of the two is the one that exploded into many pieces that Tom Dowd put back together. You know, I think it was Land of a Thousand Dances. They, it's, it's, I know it's everywhere. Yeah. It's different in every story you read. So I'm not sure, but it, listening to them, I would say it's Land of a Thousand Dances. Okay. But yeah. one of those tapes. But what happened was Wexler brought down a new tape that when the tape machine stopped, it wouldn't stretch. So they'd gotten a cut and they were running it back and it, something happened with the machine and it didn't stretch. It just shattered into oh. pieces. And so Tom Dowd said, y'all just go to lunch and we'll leave me with this here for, for a while. And he spliced it all back together and that was in, ended up being the take. <laughs> yeah. But they said it was in, you know, dozens of pieces. 
latest version of Mustang Sally was released in 1966, and by January of 1967, it had peaked at number six on the Billboard Rhythm and Blues charts. Pickett's version became the essential recording, which brought the song to incredible heights. Rolling Stone magazine has repeatedly included it in the list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, and the track remains one of the most iconic recordings of Pickett's career. In 1991, Pickett was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is a very, very important song. It's probably one of the most covered songs, maybe not recorded covered, but played in bands. I can tell you, I have played this song hundreds and hundreds of times, possibly more. If you're a pub or a club touring band and you do any kind of R&B or blues songs, this is a standard. It's an incredible song. It's so important. And I feel blessed that we got to go to Fame Studios and meet up with Rodney Hall, Rick's son, and talk a little bit about this. We have a lot of videos coming up on Fame and Muscle Shoals, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you, Wilson Pickett, for covering this. Thank you to the incredible studio of Fame and, of course, the Swampers who played on this. It's some of the best music ever made. And when you've got somebody like Tom Dowd engineering and Jerry Wexler and, of course, the great Rick Hall producing it, it's no surprise that this is one of the most important recordings of all time. Thank you ever so much for watching. So long, farewell, a wiedersehen, au revoir, adios. Um, speak to you all again soon. Thanks ever so much. So long, goodbye.